What is up everybody, Isaac Okuson here with Civil Engineering Academy. I wanted to come at you again with another quick tip video. This is for those studying for the FE exam. So if this is you, uh, you're gonna wanna stick around as we're gonna talk about some FE test taking tips to help you pass the fundamentals of engineering exams. So hang around and we'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back. So let's talk about some of the awesome test taking tips that we've come up with to help you ace the FE exam. So as many of you know, uh, unless you're living under a rock, if you're going to take the FE exam, this exam is a six hour exam. After all the uh, hoopla they get you through at the beginning of this, you actually have only five hours and 20 minutes to get through uh, the problems. And so the test is actually broken up into a morning portion or two parts, a morning portion and an afternoon portion, or basically two parts. You cannot go back to the first part after it's done. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, also, you want to go to the NCEES website and the first thing you're ever gonna do is get registered with them to find out uh, where you're gonna be taking the exam. You choose a testing center for that. Uh, you're going to want to choose a time that makes sense for you where you're not so busy and you can really dedicate yourself to taking um, this, this FE exam. It's a big milestone in your life, right? So that way we've got the logistical crap out of our hair. You know where you're taking it, you know what time, uh, you have a date set, and you want to give yourself enough time that you can prepare for this. Um, you don't want to give yourself so much time that you're going to forget about it. But, you know, give yourself three months or something like that to really get prepared for this exam. So that's the, the first couple tips, you know, that you need to kind of get this thing out of your hair. Uh, the next thing is that you are given, when you register for the NCES, you're given a free copy of the FE handbook. So you're going to give uh, this thing your total attention as you're studying for the FE exam. Our recommendation there is to get into that as soon as possible. You do not want to mess around. Um, so if you're studying either homework or you can study even the book a little bit, you'll want to use this book to get familiarized with the equations that are in it. Um, one of the biggest kind of hurdles to get over, I guess, a little bit is not only to know what's in it, but also get familiar with the equations that they use because a lot of times what they use in the FE handbook does not match what you used in your textbook. Um, sometimes the variables are different or it looks a little different. It's just off a little bit. You're not used to it. So you gotta get used to using the FE handbook. Uh, and like I said, you'll get a free PDF copy of it when you register with the NCES. So make sure you are um, using that. Another piece of that puzzle is to just use the search function get very used to hitting that control F and searching for a particular term and finding out where that is in the FE handbook so that you can get there very, very quick and you don't have to mess around very much in looking for the equations that you need. So get the handbook, get it, get used to using it. Uh, and even if you aren't studying homework problems, like I said, uh, look through that book just so you become a little bit familiar with it. The other thing is that you need to do is that you need to become very familiar with the calculator that is approved to use on the FE exam. So the NCES puts out a list of approved calculators you can use. My recommendation is find one that you like. Um, I'm just gonna read here real quick. It's from, you can choose the F, all FX 115, all FX 991 models from Casio. Uh, if you have a Hewlett Packard, you're a fan of those, you can use all the HP 33s and the 35 models, but no others. And if you are a Texas instrument, a TI person, you can use the TI-30X uh, and the TI-30X-36X models. Um, basically any of those models that have a 30X in it or a 36X in it, you should be good to go. So if you have your approved calculator, what you wanna do is use that Either if you're in school, you start using it for all your homework problems. Start using it for your classwork. So just start getting comfortable with it and the functions that it can do. Um, learn all the ins and outs of using that calculator. I always liked using a calculator that had a solar function to it just in case the batteries died. But anyway, go check out those models, find one that you like, and start practicing problems using that calculator. 
All right, so the next tip we have for you is that when you look at the NCES specifications, you'll notice that they give a range of how many problems are on the exam. You'll want to be dedicating the majority of your time until you get very comfortable with, with the problems in the higher density problems. So for the morning portion, that's mainly gonna be your mathematics and your statics. There's a ton of that on the morning. So you wanna get very, very familiar with that. So go review the NCES spec, uh, NCEES spec, and work on the highest density type of problems until you are comfortable uh, solving them. And so for the morning portion, that's gonna be like the math and statics for the afternoon. Most of that's gonna be like geo, transportation, and the water resource type problems. So those are, the, those are really where you need to get your head into those type of problems until you get um, some familiar, familiarity with them. Wow, say that one fast. But um, so, you know, look at the highest density problems, get comfortable with those, because that's what you need to do to uh, really ace this exam and then you can focus on the lower density because uh, most people when they want a, a passing score on this we're hearing you know somewhere around 60 percent will get you a passing score so if you can focus on those higher higher density problems then you'll you'll, you'll be golden so um, focus on those and you'll have the best chances of passing this the first time so that's a good tip um, another thing that we can think of uh, as well as uh, is just simple strategies taking the exam. You know that the test is broken up into two sections. So when you're going through the exam, um, it really is a mix of what you know, but also just managing the time that you're given. You know you only have so many minutes per problem, so you really got to get through the exam. So if you're going through the exam and you're noticing you can't find the equation in the FE handbook, by using the search function or you just can't find it. Work the problem the best you can and then you can flag it. Their uh, computer-based system allows you to flag problems so you can flag it and come back to it. Make sure that you give it an answer, flag the problem, and then come back to it after you've finished uh, the exam or whenever, you, some, you know, maybe something pops in your head. But after you have finished, then come back and review those problems that you have flagged. But you gotta kind of keep moving forward uh, making sure you're always, um, you know, keeping it timed and moving forward. Some time management going on there. Um, but keep in mind, though, um, the morning portion, you can't go back to the morning portion to solve any of those problems. Once that morning portion is done, you can't go back there. And, you know, same with the afternoon. You can't go back to the afternoon. So anyway, do that. That helps. The other recommendation we have when solving some problems is not to skip around. You know, let's say you get to the first problem, you don't understand it that well, so you just skip it. Maybe the second one you didn't study so hard, so you skip it. And all of a sudden you've skipped 10 problems. Um, you don't want to do that. So just take the problems head on as they give them to you and give them your best shot. Uh, that way you, you get a complete understanding, you give it your best shot right at the beginning. And when you, if you do that, you'll make your way through the exam, you'll flag the problems you don't understand and come back to them, just like we talked about before. Anyway, guys, uh, that's that's really it. So if you do those strategies, you'll be able to ace this FE exam. You wait about seven to 10 days to get the results back. You'll get an email from NCES. You'll go check uh, your results in your My NCES account and boom, you're on your way to becoming uh, an EIT and the next step is to become a professional engineer. Um, another thing you'll want to check out is a lot of states are decoupling which means they're decoupling the experience needed from the actual exam that you'll be taking for the PE so this is the next step so you might want to check that out maybe you can take that exam a little early earlier than you thought but a lot of states require that you have to have exa the exam plus the experience um, to take it so anyway you'll have to check that out with your own state's uh, professional licensing group anyway uh, a lot of tips there for you hopefully this has helped you out as you've prepared to the, take the FE exam um, if you ever want more tips and tricks related to the FE or the PE go check us out at civilengineeringacademy.com we've also prepared an entire review course if that's of interest to you go check that out at civilfereviewcourse.com I think you'll be happy with it. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it. And we will talk to you next time. Bye.